Carl, Carl. All right, all right, all right. Judge, was this action politically motivated? What? This is politically motivated. I went down there to see how things were working at juvenile court, and I saw a woman be get done horribly wrong. She came out and asked me for help, so I said, okay, I'll take your case pro bono. I went and read through her jacket and everything the feds had said is wrong about the way they run stuff down there was true. Rubber stamped order, no return on service, and so-called affidavit, get this, she's supposed to be the, the mother of some unknown child that somebody in Virginia claims she's the mother of. She's been going through this for eight years, there was no date of birth, no name, no birth certificate. She doesn't know who the devil they're talking about. And they had appointed some person down there uh, to represent the out of state interest. So this woman's getting paid and she had a regular day. So the woman's supposed to miss another day off from work to come down there for somebody's convenience. So I moved to dismiss this. And I said, well, first off, the affidavit is in a deficient as per the federal court findings. I said, you don't have a summons appropriately issued. It's rubber stamped, which is against what the Fed said and the state. And then you have no return on service. This woman's not even supposed to be here. We moved to dismiss. That's overruled. You're getting out of line. I said, I'll get way out of line. And then he went down, okay, that's one day. I said, you only have $10 contempt jurisdiction over me. I'm a lawyer. I'm not a defendant on your docket. Well, that'll be two days. I said, keep going. I'm reporting you to the court of judiciary. And by then, I learned that Brett Wyrick, who is my opponent's nephew, is down there egging him on to take me into custody and jack me up. So I think it's, it's a disgrace and a shame and reflective on what kind of law enforcement and prosecutorial exercise of mis-exercise of authority when somebody's nephew is going to try to ruin the campaign of his aunt's opponent by coming up with something like that. He didn't even have the authority to lock me up. And then we found what the delay was as they tried to put it in like I was delinquent on child support instead of getting into it hot and heatedly down there about this. I mean, I'm a little hot under the collar. I've, 40 years I've never seen such a circus as they've got down there. That is the most disgraceful farce I've ever seen. And then they got a multi-million dollar setup so the people can come in there and go through like you're going to the airport to check in so they can be lazy and not have to pull the files out. Somebody does it for them. And then they got a production line down there where I don't see how anybody can be adequately represented under that whole thing. That's good. What Judge, you, you called the magistrate off. off. What? What do you think set the magistrate off? Well, I've known him for years. You see, I've been busting him since 19, late 1970s on habeas corpus petitions. So every other time he lost, Harold Horn, and he's down there trying to show his oats. Actually, he seems to have gotten so nervous about it, he took a recess and couldn't come back on the bench, and they had to get a replacement. You called his authority into question. Tell us of course I that. did. In Shelby County, there are supposed to be no referees nor magistrates except that every ju uh, excuse me, criminal court judge, every circuit court judge, and every chancellor has approved. Any one of the judges or the chancellor can blackball any particular referee or magistrate. So you've got a general sessions level judge whose persons who decides following from Kenneth Turner that you are going to appoint a magistrate. That started because Kenneth Turner didn't even have a high school diploma in the Supreme Court rule in 1982. He couldn't hear a case. So the taxpayers were paying him a full salary for coming down there one day a week. So we had to hire five referees to do what he was doing in a special judge, which is also illegal. They still have one. The special judge under Tennessee law has to be nominated and selected by any three lawyers having business before the court. So they've got a fake perjured affidavit down there in everybody's jacket that three lawyers before the court elected whoever it is supposed to be magistrate or special judge. And the bottom line is, is you got a line item salary on the county commission's budget. How in the devil are you going to get elected every day? See, it's a farce. Will you be able to change any of this as district attorney? Yes. I saw about eight or nine criminal violations down there today. I had no idea it was that bad. People worked for years to get that place straightened out. Now it's gone back to worse almost other than the lack of the use of the N-word in court. 
that I experienced the first time I appeared in 1974. About a month and a half from now, it'll be 40 years. Would you have done anything differently? Had no. you known this would be the outcome? I don't care. I always stood up for my clients. If it meant getting locked up for contempt so far, yes. It is the first time I've ever been locked up, actually. Now, Judge, what would you say to those who would say that it's politically motivated on your side? Why? I didn't know I was going to have a client down there, and I didn't know that woman was going to be so egregiously wronged. I just went down there to look. So she came out to the hallway and asked me to help her out. I said, well, I'll take your case pro bono. If it, and I looked at that jacket, and I haven't seen anything that bad even back in the old days. Where are you taking your fight for justice now? Well, first off, there's going to be an official complaint to the court of the judiciary about what's going on down there. And actually, considering all circumstances, I couldn't hear my own matter, but it looks like there's official oppression. We had heard that you're real. Like you said, you said you've shut it down. You got to do that? If, I filed, if we get a habeas corpus, which I don't think it is filed as an appeal, uh, I could shut it down. In fact, there have been several times over the last, since 1980, when we almost, well, we did get it shut down until they changed what they were doing. First off, it was inadequate assistance from counsel, not appointing a counsel for indigent defendants. Next thing, it was back uh, inappropriate sentences. Then it was back to, again, inappropriate uh, provision of counsel for indigents. It went back and forth, back and forth. I had one in there in my courtroom in 1991 where the sheriff asked me to hear a habeas and they had about 250 non compass mentis defendants down here that they had sentenced indefinitely and had been locked up for more than a year and a half. They had guardians but nobody could find them because they didn't have true names. So when I heard it, he got all feisty down there, said he was too important to come so we had to go send and get him handcuff him because he wouldn't come but anyway we've done what we've done and I thought the thing was getting better but I have never seen such a disgraceful farce in my entire legal career and on that I was first African-American prosecutor in this area I was head of the public defender's office I tried cases as part-time with the PD's office and then on the bench that is a travesty I had no idea how bad that is. I was surprised at what happened in court today. It was just a, a total, total shock to us, and we're just so glad that Judge Brown is free, and we have an appeal scheduled. Yay! Well, Yay! I actually several judges signed release orders, but because they put it in his child support, they didn't know where to send it until another criminal court judge, who was about the fifth individual involved on the bench, found out what was going on, and he just finished up the orders. Judge, were you surprised when everything started to happen this morning? What do you mean? No, I, look, I have had a lot of judges in this county, Arkansas, Mississippi, whatever, excuse me, who have threatened to find me in contempt, but I wasn't even doing anything except doing some lightweight stuff. Right here, sir. So, Trump B is for God's sake. You challenge the jurisdiction, you challenge the qualification, challenge the venue, challenge the service of process, challenge the summons. That's what a defense lawyer is supposed to do. And when the so called magistrate won't go, challenge his credentials. So that's what you're supposed to do when you defend somebody. So if you go down there and you expect people to be defending, where they just go, uh huh, okay, this is what we will, sure. Well, defend somebody, for God's sake. Come on, Judge. So anyway, thanks for coming down. Thanks, Judge. Thanks. It was quite interesting in there. Um, they treated me okay inside. <laughs> <laughs> All right.